48 Hour Senior Executive Producer Susan Zorinsky, good enough uh, to join us today. Lots to get here, Susan, in part because these awful and grisly chapters that we were uh, seeing in Peter's piece are but two chapters of a much longer story here. Right. I mean, this is a story that spans four decades. It's almost like a Stephen King novel. Um, there have been a lot of writers who have written about it. There's even been stories like in, the, in, the, in Texas where a lot of girls get killed on these highways. And you find that these stories are occurring where the kids are poor, they're hitchhiking, and it becomes this highway of death where not one but multiple killers sort of focus on because they know there are vulnerable people. The age is like 12 to in their 30s. Um, the interesting thing is, as mentioned, is that uh, Prime Minister Trudeau is sinking a fair amount of money mm -hmm. And these kids are what they call First Nation. They're kind of indigenous kids. It's almost like Black Lives Matter in the United States. So there's a real push here. There have been several people arrested. The American was arrested for one case in particular, but by the time they got the DNA and they tracked him down, he was dead. Another young man who is featured in our show uh, literally is convicted of four four murders, the uh, young Leslie girl is, is in our piece, but he was in court Wednesday trying to get these convictions overturned. He is the youngest serial killer on record. He had four or five deaths attributed to him. He's in his early 20s, but there he was on Wednesday trying to get these cases. So this highway really does become a character in, in, in this story I itself. Um, I was struck again by the fact that uh, you do have, uh, obviously, Differing motives. It, 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 we, when you see it, you think, well, has somebody just continued to strike? I guess at some point, uh, and perhaps this has brought the Prime Minister Trudeau I involved, they had to do something about this highway, not really the people trafficking it. Yeah, I mean, we're talking 40 years, yeah. and I think a lot of people, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police really did care and were trying. They've taken a gut punch. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. But, you know, there is never enough money for these kind of cases. And because these kids were poor, from a very poor area, that's why I think Trudeau saw a national movement here. That's why I mentioned, like, Black Lives Matter. Did these kids, were they throwaway kids because they were just poor? So I think this wave, after 40 years of comings and goings in these deaths, there's going to be a focus now. And I think that these cases are solvable. New technology, there's DNA. Um, so I think that the drive will really help close some of these cases. Uh, you know, one of the young women featured in our story, the case of Maddie Scott, mm -hmm. Her body's never been found. There's, you know, there's no real any information, but her parents are hanging in there. And these are families, you know, whether you're poor or you're not poor. I think Trudeau really has something that resonates for people, and he's kind of standing up for them. Understands the sense of closure. You mentioned the DNA. I know it's already been impactful in one such case, and boy, we do hope uh, it is in others. Before I let you go, I know you want to discuss, uh, I, I was talking with Aaron about Cal Harris, uh, Absolutely. a piece that you guys have been all over. Yes, uh, you know, this is a story that we've been on for years. And as a matter of fact, when Cal Harris did his first interview, along with his third trial, it, he sat down with Aaron Moriarty. And it was a tough interview. Um, I, this is kind of unheard of. Four cases, Cal Harris, a wealthy upstate businessman, accused of killing his wife. She died, she disappeared, body never found, on September 11th, 2001. So the world was looking in a different place. Um, two convictions overturned. Third conviction hung. This story, as Aaron mentioned on Wednesday, a bench trial. And the results are pretty incredible. And so we have two stories that are, that are kind of riveting, both in the news. I mean, this story in Canada took front page news in the New York Times as a huge feature. So we have two driven stories this week. Even though it's a holiday weekend, get your hot dogs and Settle on up and Look, stay with Susan, me. Susan, we are saying, like, these lines, they, they don't exist. People are getting where they need to go. They will have their uh, you-know-whats in the seats. They will be ready to watch, again, a bunch of fascinating stuff, great stuff, and uh, just perhaps two reasons why you were graced with the Gracie. Congratulations. Yes, Aaron, Aaron Moriarty and, and producer Gail Zimmerman for a very strong, potentially wrongfully accused of a young woman. So, and that's a story that keeps on. We're driving. And I, you know, I did call you a wee powerhouse. I have to own it. I like it. I'm going to adopt it. I'm going to have a shirt made up, <laughs> I think. It's true. <laughs> Susan, terrific stuff as always. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. I have to push ahead now. Again, you can watch uh, Peter's full report. 
Highway of Tears this Saturday on 48 Hours, as Susan just mentioned, part of a double feature that begins 9, 8 central, only on CBS.